Hi everyone, uh, and happy holidays to all of you. Today we're going to be painting this cute little deer. He is adorable. Now I did this mostly for children's classes, but when I've shown it to the adults, they really, really love it. it he is really a cute piece. So I was thinking that to do this for adults, we could put it on a base, we could put a tree next to him and make it into a, uh, a larger piece to do for an adult class at one of the libraries that I teach at, but I, I just think he is adorable. So this video today is being made for all of the children that picked up the kits at the library, and uh, they are going to paint along with me. You have your brushes, you have your paints that are in those little pods, and you have some glitter in there. Okay, so I'm just gonna walk you through the steps that I took to paint this piece. If you wanna do it differently, that's up to you. It's your piece, I always tell you, you're the artist, so you can do it in any way you would like. So I am going to start, you have a little square brush there. I start with the square brush and I'm gonna be doing all of the deer in this brown color. It's called uh, Light Umber. It's Mako's Light Umber, in case those of you who wanna know. And you don't need to put your brush in water to start with. I have water here to wash my brush in between color and then dry it on the paper towel before you go into another color so the paints don't run. So we'll start by painting the entire deer, even where the white is going to go. That's on top of the brown. So this paint gives you pretty good coverage. <clears throat> Excuse me, even the nose, the eyes, I do everything in the brown because I find it easier and you get a smoother, more thorough coverage if you do it on the whole thing and then go back in and put the white in the eyes, put the red on the nose. So you don't have to do it on the bottom part. The bottom part, we don't want to do the, uh, the brown because that we want just white and that has glitter on it. And we do glitter last, okay? Do the glitter on top of color. You don't do the glitter right on the bisque. I mean, I guess you can, but then you have that yellowy color that the bisque is, whereas if you painted white or you painted red like the nose, you get a nicer look out of the glitter. And the glitter that I use is Duncan Sparklers, and I love this. I think this is the best glitter out there. It's a, a glitter in glue, so you don't have all that mess with loose glitter. You just paint it on top of a dry color. But I do that last. I do my base colors first, so I'm doing this light umber on the entire deer. Nice and smooth. See, I don't dip for more color until I smooth out all the color that was in my brush. Because if you leave ridges in your paint and it dries, there's no way to get rid of them except to sand the piece down. So always make sure that you pull your color out as far as it will go before you dip for more color. So now you, you don't have to sit and watch me do this. You can pause the video, you can come back to it. But I'm just gonna continue to put the brown on right now. I could have done this before I started the video, but I wanted you to see how I go about it also. Okay, see, and I, I kind of overlap a lot, so if I have any light areas, if the paint is not covering 100%, I'm almost doing a second coat when I'm doing the first coat because I just go back and just continuously go over it so I have good coverage. All right, so now I'm down to the body part, and like I said, I'm going over where the chest is, is white. It's just such a cute piece. Every time I look at him, I smile. I like to put the white over the base color of the brown because I stipple it or pounce it and you get that feathery, like a hairy kind of a look to it. I don't know if you could see that close up. It's not 100% solid coverage and I think it looks cute. Roman, more reminiscent of what the actual deer looks like. Now, my husband did say to me that if it's a, if it's a doe, if it's a baby deer, it should have spots on it, white spots. Now you can do that too. I didn't, but you can. I said, it's your piece, you're the artist. You can add to it, and if you have other ideas, just go for it. See, I put a little bit. I don't scoop up the color. A lot of kids scoop up the color and put it on, and then that's too much color because look how far my brush stroke goes. The one loading of the brush, it goes pretty far, and if you have too much paint in your brush and it starts drying before you have a chance to even out those brush strokes, it leaves those ridges in the paint. And this is for the adults also, because I, I did a class yesterday where somebody did that and they had 
four ridges in the paint because they were putting too much on and didn't have time to smooth it out. See how nice and smooth my paint is? Okay, and that's by just putting a little bit of paint in the brush. You don't dip it up. This is called the ferrule. You don't dip it up all the way to the top of the ferrules. And then just try to edge down here. Now down here, you really don't have to go onto the hooves because they are going to be black. But again, I don't want you to have any white spots showing there. So you can overlap onto the hooves. And then we go back with a smaller, the pointy brush and we do the black on the hooves last. I always do black glitter last, black last, black, when I teach classes, black gets in the brush, gets in the water, and a lot of children don't clean their brushes out properly, have water in their brush, and then they go to the black, and the black runs down the piece, and it makes a mess. So I like to do black at the very end. And you could just use a small brush to do that. So I'm almost done. A little bit more in the front here. Make sure that you get underneath and in the back, in between the legs, and keep going back, smooth it out. If you see any light spots, just touch them up. Just I have a few more spots here. Every time you turn them in a different direction, you see more spots that you've missed. Okay, I think I've got pretty good coverage. And if, and if you paint it and then later on you see you missed a spot, you just go back and touch it up again. I'm just going around now to make sure I don't have any ridges in my paint, that it's all nice and smooth. I'm not adding any more color to it. And you see what I said about the hooves? I went on to them a little bit, but I didn't go all the way down to the bottom so that the brown doesn't hit the white area that I'm trying to keep clean. Okay, so now the brown is done. And I think this might be a little different color brown than I used here, but I think you have this brown. I think I used the medium mocha on this and I'm using the light umber on this one. So it doesn't really matter. Animals are all different colors. So that gives you two different looks, but I believe you have the medium mocha, which I kind of like a little better, but for teaching purposes, it doesn't really matter what color I use here. Okay, so now I'm going to take my smaller brush, and you guys have a smaller brush, a pointy brush, and I'm going to paint the white in the eyes. And even though I have a lot of black in the eye, I still kind of do the whole eye in the white. It's a lot easier. I don't want to get it on my clothes. Pull up your sleeves when you work. That's the first thing we usually tell the kids and the adults when we go into a library class. Roll up your sleeves. So it doesn't have to be solid, solid coverage, but I get the white in the eyes because the whole thing about this deer, his eyes are so big and beautiful. And I want that white to show on either side of the black. So it's a lot you know, harder to do just the corners and keep the paint smooth. So I just spread it out across the whole eye, like so. Okay, and what else do we have white? Okay, we have white on the bottom, so let's do that now. And then we have white on the chest. So I'm going to paint the white on the bottom area. And I always do the bottoms. You're gonna go back to your square brush again for most of it. And then if you wanna edge, you can use your smaller brush to edge, but always do the bottoms. So we'll start with the bottom because then it'll dry and then I can stand it up. Now, as I work my way up the sides, and if this is nice and smooth, it should almost dry immediately. So I can hold this in my hand while I'm doing the white. And if the white hits the hooves, that's okay because black covers everything. So we get this done first and then we do black last. Black goes over everything. So I always do black last for that reason too, besides the mess that it makes if it gets in the water and the dirty it dirties your brushes now there is a difference i don't know if you could see it but there is a difference between the white i painted and the color of the bisque hard to see on the camera but there is a difference the bisque is a little yellower pull your paints out 
nice and smooth. And as you're painting, you can see the difference. If you've missed a spot, you can tell right away because it's a different color white. And this is already dry, so you can stand it up. If you put it on properly and you've pulled it out, if your color is still wet looking, that means it's not dry. Keep twisting it around, make sure I get every spot. Now, if you have snow, for some of the adults that are watching this, uh, I didn't give the kids snow for the bottom because snow is a little bit more difficult to work with. So I just did glitter on this and I think it looks adorable, but you can also do snow. I don't know if you could see the sparkle that's on there. And that's the what I showed you, the Duncan sparklers. Okay, that's the Duncan sparklers. Okay, so now what I want you to do is keep take the brush that you have and this little area here, uh, animals usually are white underneath, like here, can you see it here? Underneath there, and then you bring it up and it's narrower and it goes under their faces, generally. Doesn't mean they all look like that. We all have different colors onto our skin and markings on our skin. So animals are all the same way. They all have different markings. So I'm doing mine with a, a little bit of uh, color underneath. So I just put a little bit in the brush and I dab like this, just pounce it on. And if you, you, you see that little feathered edge I'm getting on this side right here? I like that. I think that that looks hairy. I just feather some on. And you don't need a lot. I have very little in my brush. Just a little dab. You turn it in different directions. And then I turn it so that his head is turned, so I want it to go under his neck. And this is just like a, a guessing part here. You, there's no right or wrong with how much you put. How did I do this one? Yeah, I just kind of narrowed it out up there, just like I have here. And then in, in your little kits that I gave you, you have little bows that you can put on. I want to make it wider. I just go back and go over it a little bit. Okay, so you see that? And you also can take it under his belly. I'm not going to do that right now, but you can take it under his belly. See how I have it under the belly? And what I would do, though, is I would put some on the back of his tail. I think that looks cool. Just put a little bit back here and you can dab it again too. There's doesn't have to be a perfectly drawn line. It's supposed to be the fur of the animal. So just dab it on, have a little bit of the brown showing through it is okay. All right. Go up a little higher there. Okay, so we have the white done there. We have the white in the eyes. Okay, while you have the white in the brush, you're gonna be doing a little bit of red on the nose. So I just you just need a drop. I'm gonna pick up, with the white in the brush, I'm gonna pick up a little, 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 tiny, tiny, tiny bit of red and make a pink. In fact, I'm gonna put more white in it because I think it actually got to be too pink. See this color I have here? That's about, oh, I just made a mess. <laughs> okay, um, and I'm going to put that in his ears. You see the ears? I have a little bit of pink in there. And again, you can just pounce it Dab it up and down. Have a little pink in the ears. You never bang the brushes on the bottom of the bowl. Swish them in the water so they keep a point. And I'm gonna use some of this brown that I just spilled all over the table to touch up the edge of the ears because I went a little bit too high. And you can do that. You can always go back over it, like I said. And then I'm gonna do the nose because I do have the red in the palette. I'll take my small brush 
and do a red nose. I made him Rudolph. If you don't want that, you can make a black nose. And the nose has a definite shape, so you can follow right along with the markings that are on the bisque for the shape of the nose. Okay, so he's got a little red nose. Now this red looks darker because I have the glitter on it. But this is the same red. It's called Barnyard Red, and that also is Duncan's, which Mako makes. But I, I mostly use the Mako line of acrylics, but I do like a lot of the Duncan colors. So the Barnyard Red is a great coverage color for red. Some reds get black streaks in them and stuff. This, this I love. I love the Barnyard Red, and, and I love their glitter. Other than that, I'm mostly using Mako's acrylics. So now we need a little bit of black for the hooves. I'm gonna use my small pointy brush for that. And don't put too much paint in the brush, especially for the hooves now, you guys, because it's such a little area. If you have too much, it's gonna be going over the deer, it's gonna be going over the white base. So your pointy brush with very little in the brush. Just take your time. Okay, you see a little bit of black that I have down there? Just a drop of paint in the brush. And I think there's a little indentation too there that you can follow for how far it should go up. Takes a little longer with the small brush, but you'll be a lot neater. Put that right, I'm working out of the cap. Well, you have the pods, so it's about the same size. The paint's dry so fast that I'm able to hold it, but you know, anywhere that I've painted, but if you put too much paint on, that's also gonna take a long time to dry. Okay, I've got one just about done, and I think I'm gonna to need to put a little more brown on this one because I don't think I went up. Yeah, I have some brown in there, so I'm gonna swish my brush. And I'm gonna go back with my brown and see if I can get in here. Nope, not that way. It's a little hard to get in here. Oh, here we go. Now you also could put some white when you were doing the white pouncing. You could, sometimes I do white where the hoof meets the leg and I do a little white pouncing there also. It looks like hair, like furry hair there. Okay, but like I said, you can, you can keep going back and touching up where you went out of the lines or you missed a spot. And that's what I just did just now. I stopped, I went back to the brown. Now I'm going back to the black again. Just take your time. Very little in the brush. Two brush strokes kind of do the hoof. You go one on the top and one closer to the base. Okay, I've got two done. Okay, I have two done, the two front ones. Now I'll go to the back ones. And the back ones are connected. They don't have a space between the legs back there, so they are connected. So you just paint it as if it's two separate ones and I connected them. See here, whoops, almost dropped them. See how I connected them right here? Connected the two feet hooves with the black. And I think I got some of the brown on the base, so I'm gonna go back and touch up the white also before I do the glitter. So mine doesn't always come out perfect the first time around, but just remember one thing, do not put color over color if it's wet. If the color you put down, you make a mistake and you wanna to touch it up, you must wait for it to dry. Because if you don't, you're just gonna be smearing the two colors together and then it starts getting muddy and messy. So always make your color dry. Okay, 
Okay, I have all the his feet done. But I must go back and touch up where I went out of the lines with the brown. So now really clean your brush well, especially with the black. You can change your water if you want. But it's such a small brush, it really cleans up pretty well. See, now I'm touching this up and it's still a little wet. And I shouldn't be doing that because that's how you smear it. So don't do what I'm doing. Let it dry. Okay. All right, so he's pretty much done. Now, if you wanted to add white spots on his back, you can. Um, I just think he's so adorable the way he is. So now we're gonna go back and we're gonna do the eyes. I always find I put a drop of water in my brush when I do an eye, just a drop, only in the pointy brush because it flows, the black flows off the brush a lot easier. So I'm gonna do a big circle. So I, I kinda, I don't know if I could do it with you watching. I'm gonna start here. I start in the middle and then I scoop around and make a circle that way. And then I scoop around the other way and make a circle and then fill it in. And I'm messy because I'm doing it upside down. But I just go around and straighten it out. Okay, now I make the black touch the top of the brown and underneath I make it go the complete circle, but not in the corners. You could see this one better. And then with a little bit of water in my brush, just very little and very little paint, I roll it to a point and I do the outline. I'm gonna be doing the same thing on his mouth. So I outline top and then I outline bottom. Now, if you guys are having a hard time with this, with the outline, you can use an ultra fine point Sharpie to do the outline. But if you do spray it or seal the piece, you should do that before you use the Sharpie because if you spray over a Sharpie, from what I understand, it does run, okay? But I, I did it with the brush with a little bit of water in my brush. I'm going to do the other side. He's got a nice big eye. They say deer are known for their eyes. Outline it. I am going to put lashes. Okay. So I don't have as much white showing in the back of this eye, so I may go back and put some white in there because I like the white showing on both sides of the eye like that one. So you can always go back once it's dry and fool around with it. So I'm going to roll my brush to a point, see if I can get some lashes out of this brush. This is not as fine a brush as I used on the first piece, but it works. Okay. So I'm going to put lashes. And I'm gonna do lashes on the bottom. I flip them down. And then I'm gonna be doing the line in his mouth. I did the one side of his mouth. He's got like a little turn up on the corners. And then we'll do the other side. And then he, I do a little line going down the middle. See under his nose, I have a little line. And I don't know if I did little dots. You can do little dots if you want. Sometimes I do little dots here, like little freckles or something or other. I don't know. Just little character spots, I call them. I didn't do it on the first one, but I did it on that one. See the little dots on either side of the nose? You can do that. Okay. And then, um, well, let me finish the lashes on the other guy little water in the brush, roll it to a nice point. Go right back onto the outline. And I don't know if you could see me doing this and put your brush on the outline and flip around in a curve like that. Okay. And then on the bottom part, you go back to the outline and you flip down and make it, I curve it a little bit so that it's not just a straight line, the lash. Okay, so I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna to try to put a little white in the back corner of, because the black is dry now. Cleaning up is a little harder to do. Yeah, 
now. So I've got, I've got the, uh, the white in the back corner now. So also what I do is I put a nice white highlight in his eye. See the little comma? You could make it a dot. You could make it a comma. 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 Yes. And you, I just do it at the top, like at 11 o'clock, say, if you're looking at the eye. And there's a little highlight in both of his eyes. Okay, and I have the line in the mouth. So the only other thing that I have to do is put the glitter on. Now the glitter, I wrote on the uh, pods that you received, I wrote down on the top of one of them that says glitter. So I'm gonna be working out of the bottle here. But the glitter, you can use your bigger brush for the glitter and you can put a little bit on his nose. Just make sure you only have a little bit in your brush when you do the nose because it's a small area. And it goes on kind of white, but it dries clear. See how it goes on? It's a little white, but it will dry clear like that one. And then I don't do underneath, this is not necessary, but I do the glitter on this whole white area down here. I try not to get it on the deer, but if you want your deer to have glitter, go for it. Try not to touch the eyes because you just did them. I don't want to smear them. Okay. And you can let that dry if you want it to be more glittery, if there is such a word. Let's go back and put a second coat on. Okay. So now we have two deer, a little bit different in color but they're adorable, and I gave you a bow, and you could put the bow if you want it to be a girl, you can put the bow up here, you can put the bow at the neck, you can put the bow wherever you'd like to put it, but I like the idea that they're a little bit different in color. They're really adorable. And we have to turn it this way. I wish there were two that faced each other, but they were both in the same direction. So there's your deer, and it's such a cute piece. I just think it's adorable. They should come out with this in a bigger one. But anyway, um, if you have any questions, please feel free to, um, let me know. I am on Facebook under Rosemary Ceramics. YouTube, as you know, under Rosemary Ceramics. Um, subscribe to me. It doesn't cost anything. And I've reached over 1,000 subscribers thanks to all of you. I really appreciate it. So have very healthy and happy holidays. I thank you again. And uh, Happy New Year, too. Okay, bye-bye.